Hello, my name is Ammon Bundy, um, and I live here in Idaho, and it's a cold January evening. I'm at the end of my day. I've worked a hard day and long day, and I'm still in my work clothes. Um, but the last several days, actually the last several weeks, I've been thinking about the current state in our country, and I'm concerned, as I know most of you are as well. And many of you are, are asking, what should you do? What can you do? And I would like to take a shot at that question, if you would bear with me. But a few things I need to explain first. First, there is so much deception and information everywhere that people just don't know how to decipher what is really going on. And it is uh, a documented communist agenda to confuse the people so they will not trust the truth or so they won't recognize it. Truth does not come easy, but it is confirmed by the Spirit of God in your heart and in your mind. And many credible and incredible sources over the past two or three years I've heard from so many different people, and they've said that Trump was going to clean up the mess in our country. But I have to admit that I was certain that he would not. In the last few months since the elections, I've received hundreds and hundreds of emails and phone calls and text messages assure, assuring me that, quote unquote, Trump has this, that everything Trump is doing now is just a psyops. And never once again did I feel that it was right in my heart. In fact, I knew that Trump was not built upon a foundation of true principles. He was not built upon the principles in which our founders were built upon. He was not truly upholding the Constitution and hasn't in many ways. I think he had a desire, a true desire, but he wasn't built upon the rock, and therefore he would not be able to prevail. So I believe now that the Lord is testing the people of the United States. Many of the people in this country that desire and respect liberty put their entire trust in President Trump to secure their freedom. They put their trust in the arm of a man, and they shouldn't have. So God is now going to humble and give them a chance to return to him as the one that they must trust and must rely on to be free. Because... Freedom is not lost or gained in Washington, D.C., nor in the state capitol buildings, nor in the courthouses or the city halls. Freedom is won or lost in the heart. It is lost or won in the everyday life of each person individually. And when freedom is strong in your heart, you live free, and you do not apologize or fear for doing so. You're confident in it. When freedom prevails in your heart, and when you trust God to keep you free, you overcome any fear of a tyrant. You demand freedom or death, and there is no compromise in between, none. So a nation of people with liberty riveted in their hearts can never become oppressed by tyrants. They will demand death first and trust God to either give them the advantage to be free or to take them home to, peaceful live, to peacefully live with him again. It doesn't sound like too bad of options, right? Well, this was understood by more than just people who had freedom in their heart. In the mid-1900s, so kind of the 40s, shortly after World War II, it was well documented that the world communist leaders desired immensely to take the freedom of the people in the United States. But they knew that freedom was strong in the hearts of many people residing within the U.S. They knew that they could never take it by force. They understood that the American people at the time would never accept anything but liberty. So a new plan was devised, a plan to infiltrate the United States. They knew this plan would take decades, 
maybe even a century. They documented this plan, and we have those documents now. And one of uh, the compilations that I would refer to you is The Naked Communist by Cleon Skousen. The collective communists understood that if they would, could take freedom out of the hearts of the people of America, they could take over the U.S. and crush liberty without war, without conflict. So little by little, they filled the positions in the media, schools, colleges, churches, corporations, and government. And like Flux and Cord, the seed of collectivism, communism, with the benefits of forced wealth redistribution was sown. Until today, nearly all people in the U.S. are socialists. Even the most conservatives have replaced freedom in their hearts with force upon their neighbor. And the belief that it is okay for someone to force their neighbor to give them wealth has become completely acceptable. As long as the government agents do the forceful taking and all the neighbor does is receive it. The belief that property can be controlled, taken, or withheld by the government has become completely acceptable by even the most conservative. And the belief that trade should be restricted until one pays the, or gets permission from the government lies in the hearts of almost all the people in this country. And in the, this past year, 2020, we have seen that almost all people are okay with government restricting churches, restricting travel, restricting trade, restricting peaceful assembly, even forcing a person to put a man-made filter over their face to go out in public. <sighs> so you see, all the hard work of the most wicked men and women in communism has paid off. All the college lectures, the years of filling the bureaucratic offices, the article after article of collective socialist ideology, the very slow and arduous effort to change school curriculums, to fill the classrooms of public, of public school with doctrines of socialism, to prep the minds of the upcoming generation of, the, of our children, the oh-so-subtle oh attack on the family, to persuade fathers and mothers that family is secondary to personal gratification and their own desire, to convince them that it is not their duty to teach the children, their own children, but the duty of the state. The ever so cons The ever so consistent negative perception of identity, convincing over time that men and women to be a man or a woman is degrading, that God must have made a mistake, that you were born to be something different than what you are, and that what you are is not divine, that it can and should be changed. Communism we have to understand that communism cannot re prevail if people believe themselves to be created by God and eternally unique and special. Communism is materialism. It is collectivism, where the community is the identity, not an individual living man or woman, where the soul of a man or woman does not exist, and the body is only material for the collective to use and benefit from, and when it is no longer good to the collective, it is discarded as trash. The final and most desirable infiltration was the policing agencies. The communists knew that above all, this was most important, to convince the men and women in the police forces that their job was to enforce law rather than to defend people's rights. This was the most crucial to their agenda. For communism to prevail, socialism must be enforced first, and it would take an army of law enforcers to control the means of production and transfer the wealth of invention, labor, and trade into the hands of communists that fill the seats of government. Now, today, with the infiltration in place, the means of production and natural resources controlled, the people deceived, and the police force is unwilling to defend liberty, the communists are moving to transfer the United States from socialism 
to communism. We are not transferring from capitalism to socialism. That happened a long time ago. We are witnessing, we are about to witness the transfer of socialism to communism. And I do not need to rehearse the devastation and suffering that will occur under communist rule. Read Tortured for Christ by Richard Warmbrand if you are unaware of the iron hand of communism and how terrible it is. Now, my intent here today is to show you hope. Yes, the communist agenda has moved forward in the U.S. like an unstoppable machine of deceit and manipulation, but it is not all lost. It is not all lost because the Lord has a greater plan. And there are some that have not been deceived and have become aware in time. These people have learned to recognize truth through the Spirit of the Lord. Some of them have been forced to see the truth because the Lord has put them in a path of tyranny and force. They have gone through the fires of tribulation and have learned that God is the source of truth, hope, and liberty. As I speak, these people are uniting together and preparing to defend each other's rights to life, liberty, and property. No, don't get me wrong, there's no plan to try to overthrow the government. That would only bring unneeded bloodshed and would not produce liberty. And there is no plan to try to influence people in government to change their ways or try to replace them with others. With most of the people in this country convinced of socialism, that would also prove to be unprofitable. What we are doing is openly uniting with each other. We are meeting together and organizing to defend ourselves, our neighbors, and our neighbors when needed. We are building communication tools and laying out specific plans of how to join efforts in liberty and action. We continue to be inspired daily. We know what we are doing is right, and it is what we are supposed to do. Our faith in God and His Son, Jesus Christ, continues to motivate us and keep us humble. We are not perfect, not in any way. We have much to learn and understand, but we have come to know that when it is needed, it becomes available to us. And as we strive to do what is right and do not forget who is the source of knowledge and truth, our confidence grows stronger. We believe that sunlight is the best disinfectant and that the wicked hate the light. We feel most safe in the light and will continue to be open, truthful, and wise in all that we do. We know that we do not have power to overcome the communist web of force. It is only by the Lord's power that safety and freedom comes. He will give us the advantage in our conflicts with these men and women who wish to destroy our rights to live in peace. As we unite in faith, He will keep us free. I'm asking you now, if this message has planted even a little seed of hope in you, join us. Join with your neighbor in your area. Lift where you live and find peace under the umbrella of unity with good neighbors connected together all over the United States. Please consider and join your neighbor in defending rights. You can do this by texting rights to 80123 or go to peoplesrights.org. Thank you.